one. Hello, and welcome back to my Instagram series called Teach Me Something. Today, I am joined by the very wonderful Mr. Adrian. I actually don't even know your Good last evening. name. How bad is that? <laughs> That's all right. My surname is Pudlick, so it's P-U-D-L-Y-K. Yeah, in, in English, well, Australians pronounce it Pudlick, so I just roll with that. But it's it's actually Ukrainian. My grandparents were all Ukrainian. Uh, migrated to Australia in the 40s. Um, and so in Ukraine, it's pronounced Pudlik. Um, Pudlik. And that's it. Yeah, so my my parents tried to retain the Ukraine. Well, actually, I, I lied. My mother tried to, re to retain the Ukrainian culture as much as possible. And she sort of pushed us into Ukrainian school and stuff like that. But uh, my sister held on to it. Um, yeah. And I found football and friends and girls and stuff like that so um that went by the wayside but now in my 40s I wish I'd, I held on to it because she can speak now um a couple of different languages and understand a couple of different languages which yeah. I think always helps so yeah for sure anyway good evening amazing good evening Mr. Public <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's yeah. kick it off so first question in its simplest form what do you do for a living <clears throat> Yeah, cool. So I'm a podiatrist, um, which is a lower limb specialist. Um, it's a university degree. It's it's five years um, at any of the major universities. So I did mine at QUT, Queensland University of Technology in Brisbane. Um, graduated uh, 2000 and I don't know. I've been a pod, pod for like 21 years now, so yeah. a while ago. <laughs> um, so anything from the hip down to the big toe, I think a lot of people have the misconception. It's generally um, elderly people. And a large portion of what we do is, but um, it's anything from the hip down to the big toe lower. So, um, yeah. you know, things from shin splints, knee pain, ankle pain, arch pain. Um, we deal with diabetics, um, podiatry or uh, from the outside probably strikes people as being quite sort of um, niche. But once you're in the world, there's, there's a few different ways you can take it. So it can be biomechanical. So, you know, runners, sports players, soccer players, dancers, especially as well. You could go surgi surgery, surgical stuff. Um, generally, if you're a Victorian graduate, you'll gravitate towards surgery. You'll work in a hospital. Um, you'll work with pharmacists as well. Um, and then you can do an extra two years on top of that and be a surgeon, a podiatric surgeon. So then you're looking at sort of bunion, bunion surgeries and, and fusions and stuff like that. Yeah. So to answer your question, yeah, lower limb specialist. Um podiatrist the clinic that i own is called the foot and balance center yeah. um so i i bought it off the previous owner about five years ago it was just before COVID hit um and we've been in the area for a long time and it's just a kind of um big well-oiled machine now which is nice i can kind of step back a little bit yeah amazing it must feel nice as a business mm. owner what has been in your the whole time since 2020 since you've had the foot and balance mm. center what has been mm. the worst bit of advice that either someone's told you or a mentor has given you towards that business yeah so i i think that the the worst bit and and the best bit is kind of an antithesis of each, of each other to be honest i i probably listened to a family member a little bit too much and he was one that said um take a breath hold back, take a breath, um, slow down. Um, and and I, when I bought the clinic, I was going through some um, some family issues or some personal issues. And, and I think that probably um, fueled why they, they took that approach. Um, but I, I, played, I think I played it safe a little bit too much, um, especially in the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I probably, I, I listened to maybe one or two people a little bit too much, to be honest. And I think because they had my best intentions at heart and, and I understood why, but um, I think they were probably just a little bit too personally invested in me and and my and that step of my life or that, that chapter of what was going on in my life, I'd say. Yeah. So yeah, to answer that question, probably just not listening to enough people and then probably listening to information or advice that was just a little bit too safe. Mm, okay. So you mentioned doing things the safe way and having like the safe option tell me mm. more about that so you obviously wanted to get ahead of this business and get into it and get fired up um tell me more about the adverse effect of that when people kept on telling you to slow down yeah 
Yeah, it was probably, um, so my, my experience was unique in that I, I purchased um, an existing business. You know, I, I, I was practicing for myself by myself for a long time and I built up basically a mobile business. So a podiatry house visit business, which really exploded in something that I, I, I had one patient the first two weeks um, and I think I earned less than $53 in the first two weeks of, of practicing. So a lot of doubt, a lot of question marks, um, you know, were had. Um, and then I, I, I bought this practice off a, a previous, like I said, previous owner of the clinic. Um, so I think that I was acutely aware of the legacy of the clinic. It, you know, it had been there for, at the time, I think about 32 years. Um, it was and is the, the oldest and still largest clinic on the Gold Coast. Um, so I kind of felt like this weight of expectation, this weight of um, I have to continue what the previous owner had started. Um, you know, and I deeply respected that, but I, she worked there for a little bit. So I, I bought it and she kind of worked for me as a contractor, which was good in one on one hand because, you know, she was just there as a fountain of information. I could just ask her a thousand questions about everything, you know, like, you know, from every step of the process basically. So that was amazing. And she, she did step back. Um, she, you know, she, she had that respect for me, but having her around, I did feel the pressure to be honest. Um, and I, I definitely held back because I, um, you know, we were sort of two different generations of, of, of practitioner. Um, she went through sort of the more, more old school form of training, where I was, I was more kind of the book side of, of training. Um, and I just wanted to, I wanted to change the focus of the clinic a little bit. Um, Lewis, so I wanted to sort of focus more on musculoskeletal stuff. I wanted to focus more on the sports and the, I guess the prettier side of, of podiatry. Um, and I, I, I just had to keep myself in check, especially when she was around for the first couple of years, just to kind of not change it too much too soon. And our demographic is elderly patients. So they don't like change too much. Um, and where they're used to seeing the same practitioner having the same more or less conversations every six weeks to, you know, she's gone or, you know, there's new faces, new, new paint on the walls. It was just, it was, it was, you know, quite a few changes. So um, that's how that looked. I, I was constantly sort of like holding back if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And after she left, presumably you started scaling, right? So have mm. you started scaling into like a new practice i'm pretty sure you told me that you're getting a second practice soon is that right wrong yeah i've actually got, I've got yeah I've, I've got three um so the the main one is is in in chugan uh that's that's the mothership that we've had from from day dot and that's where everything sort of kept and everything else and then i branched out um so the clinic i was in today was in miami uh, we've got one as well in service paradise one day a week as well so um that's something that she just would not have considered um and right or wrong it was just something that i was just going to do you know more or less when i felt like it was right to pull the trigger straight away so yeah um i'm one to sort of um bite off too much and then try to catch up if that makes sense or you know jump in the deep end and then learn to swim um yeah. Whereas I, she was probably, you know, let's just focus on this, get this at capacity and then think about thinking about sort of looking at different sort of steps. Um, I definitely made a lot of mistakes. Don't get me wrong. Like, you know, there were days where I had to be in three places at once and, um, you know, disgruntled patients, disgruntled practitioners. And that's something that honestly goes on still daily, to be honest. Um, yeah. I've still got the stresses, even though it's, you know, such a, an established clinic and um it's it's set up that there's still my day changes hourly and i just yeah. have to adapt and, and go with that flow that's it it's having that entrepreneurial sort of mindset to be flexible in those moments of like the struggle and whenever tough times are coming on it's like a kick up the ass like okay cool how can i deal with it instead of Absolutely. Complaining, complaining about it, you know. Um, if you had to start your business Absolutely. all over again, right? What would be the first three things you could do, but with the knowledge base that you've got now? Um, I would, I would definitely take that extra. St I, I, if I look back upon the mistakes that I made, say the last five years since I bought the practice, I can absolutely 
say without a doubt that every time it was um for for not for not not getting not taking the next step not going a little bit bigger um you know there there were times there's been a couple of times where i was like you know we could get this person on board i don't think we've got enough patience we might have enough patience do we have enough patience you know around 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 and then by the time you sort of finish that conversation in your head the, she's the person's gone and gone to a different practice or something like that and um and absolutely i could say without a doubt there's been like three or four times where I was, i've looked back now after 5 years and just thought, yeah, I should have, I should have taken that that extra step. I should have taken that little bit of an extra risk. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Um, that um, looking back, I'd I'd probably foster relationships. Um, I'd focus on relationships a little bit better. Um, okay. I think that you know, although it's a business, you know, we're we're in we're in the business, we're in the industry of health and care. Um, and, you know, we all obviously got into just like with, you know, training and, and whatever it is, nutrition or physio or, or, you know, being a GP, you, you're in the industry for a reason, you, you know, you're a caring person and, um, there's a, there's a lot of sensitivity in, in health and care as well. So, um, I think that I probably lost track of that a couple of times in the beginning, um, where I was all kind of like, you no, know, you've got your stuff together. You know what you're doing. You just go there and do that. I, I should have probably stopped and asked, "Are you okay to do that?" And how do you feel about this and stuff like that. So yeah. I, I probably should have fostered um, the relationships a little bit better. Definitely. Okay. That all sounds magical. So you got what um, relationships and pretty much taking the leap of faith whenever, when it comes up, just go with your gut and just jump in. Absolutely. Yeah, cool. That's... Yeah, and I think that probably ties back with what I sort of started with where I was in that position early on where I was probably listening to somebody or a couple of people a little bit too much um, and I and I should have, you know, taken that extra little jump. But, um, yeah. you know, it is what it is. It's hindsight really, isn't it, mate? That's it. That's it, mate. You just got to roll with the punches sometimes. So, Absolutely, dude. I know. If... Um... If you're going to recommend anybody for me to learn off of, who would you recommend? In any space? that I know personally, that you know personally, yeah. Honestly, I know this sounds cliche, but it's absolutely a cliche for a reason. I learn the most from. Or I think I'm a pretty intuitive guy, and and I do listen to my gut, but then I do second guess it at times. But then I think talking to and listening to elderly people mm. i think talking to people that have gone through wars and and you know the depression and um you know and i'm not I'm not calling it out sort of generation wise but you know you listen to some of those people on and, and what they went through um like for example i had a, I, I had a guy today you know well, he that he had an accent and would have been in his probably mid to late 50s and i asked him about a tattoo that was sticking out the bottom of his um sleeve and and basically he was he was in the Yugoslavian civil war um he was you know in the trench for hours his feet are, are numb he had gangrene he's got really bad nerve damage you can't feel his feet at all literally you could stab his feet he wouldn't feel it and he had the nerve damage from being in the trenches and um mm. you know from frostbite and stuff like that and uh, i guess i didn't learn anything from him specifically but I, it was just like again just another reminder it's like wow okay um Kind of, it does put things into perspective for me yeah. when I'm stressed about little things with work. You listen to a story like that. So honestly, I quite often have those moments with patients that have gone through um, what they've gone through and it's like, wow, okay, that's that's amazing. That's touched me, to be honest. Amazing. Mm. amazing. So, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Amazing. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Adrian Putlock. Putlock? Nice, mate. I got it. I got it. That's good. Good luck. Good luck. Nice. Uh, oh, all right. Man, Th thank you so much. Thank you so much for donating your time. I appreciate you. And my pleasure, man. I'll see you soon.